Hey class, Mr. Hanji here. For today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at section 7.1, which is going to deal with interior and exterior angles. Now, for today's lesson, we have two learning goals, and our first learning goal is that you will be able to find the measure of interior and exterior angles of a triangle, and you will be able to find the sum of measures of the interior angles of a polygon. So we're going to look at the interior and exterior angles of different shapes and what relationship we find and know about those. Now, first we're going to start with interior and then we'll move into exterior. So let's take a look at interior angles first. Now, you can find a relationship between the measures of the three angles of a triangle. An interior angle is formed by two sides of a polygon with the common vertex. So a triangle has three interior angles. And the three interior angles are going to be these ones right here. Now, interior angles are the angles that are formed, that are inside the shape. So anytime we talk about interior angles, we're talking about angles inside the shape. Now, we're going to talk about a relationship between the measures of all the interior angles for different shapes. So if we talk about a triangle, we have talked about this multiple times, but the sum of all the angles inside a triangle, the sum of all three angles add up to be 180 degrees. So that's going to be our first relationship that we're going to look at. So the sum of the angle measures of a triangle is 180 degrees. So if we take all the interior angles of a triangle, they would add up to be 180. We've used that concept in previous sections to help us define the measure of a missing angle when they gave us the two others. So that is our starting point, that the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. Now we're going to take that a step further to look at the measure of the sum of all the angles in any and all different sizes of shapes. So let's say we have a quadrilateral, a pentagon, hexagon, octagon, whatever it may be, we will be able to find the sum of all the angles inside that shape, whatever it may be, by using the polygon angle sum theorem. So the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a polygon with n sides is n minus 2 times 180. So whenever we want to know the measure or the sum of the measures of the angles inside a shape, we just have to take how many sides that shape has. Say it's 5. We plug 5 in for n. So you do 5 minus 2 times 180. And that formula is going to tell you what the sum of all the angles inside a pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon, and so on is. So that's going to be our main starting point. This is going to be our main formula that we are going to use today. So this n minus 2 times 180 is the polygon angle sum theorem. To check it and to try it out, let's try with a triangle. Triangle has three sides. So that means I'm going to plug 3 in for n. 3 minus 2 is 1. And 1 times 180 is 180, which matches what the sum of the angles in a triangle should be. So when we talk about the sides of different polygons, a polygon just refers to a shape like a triangle. Okay. Other examples of polygons would be quadrilaterals, pentagons, hexagons, heptagons, octagons, nonagons, decagons, whatever it may be. Okay. It just refers to a shape that has sides. Now, when we're talking about different sides, if you ever don't know how many sides a shape has, just go ahead and Google it or look it up. Or just kind of keep in mind that a triangle has three, quadrilateral has four, pentagon has five, hexagon has six, heptagon has seven, octagon has eight, nonagon has nine, decagon has ten, and then anything over ten we're just going to state as a number gone. So a 14-sided shape will just be referred to as a 14 gone. 
a 27-sided shape is a 27 gone. Now there are technical names for those, but we're not going to be worried about it for anything larger than 10. All right, so using this theorem, we're going to go ahead and get into example one, which is going to ask us to use the polygon angle sum theorem to go through and answer the following questions. So we're going to use this n minus 2 times 180 to help us answer our questions for example 1. Alright, for part A it asks, what is the sum of the interior angles of a hexagon? So we need to figure out what the sum of all the angles in a hexagon add up to be. So let's first ask ourselves this, what or how many sides does the hexagon have? Well, a hexagon implies six sides. So that means we're going to use six for my value of n. So we're going to take n to equal six. We're going to do six minus two times 180. Just use your calculators to go through and make the quick calculation. So we're going to do 6 minus 2 times 180, and we end up with 720 degrees. So the sum of all the angles in a hexagon is 720 degrees. And that is our answer for that question. All right, so if they ask you what the sum of the interior angles are, all you have to do is just take how many sides that shape has, in this case six, plug six in for n, and then it will tell you what the sum of the interior angles are. Now, if we look at part B, part B states the sum of the interior angles adds up to be 3060, how many sides does the polygon have? So it gives us the sum of the interior angles already. So if I plugged a number in for n into this equation, it would equal this. This question wants us to identify how many sides the polygon has. So that means I want to figure out what n equals when this whole thing equals 3060. So what we're going to do for this problem is take 3060 and we're going to set it equal to this equation to figure out how many sides the shape has. So to set this up, we're going to take 3060 and set it equal to n minus 2 times 180 and then we're going to go through and solve for n. So when you're going to go through and figure out how many sides it has, you're going to take this, we're going to first divide it by 180. So when I take 3060 and I go through and divide it by 180, I end up with 17. So I have 17 equals n minus 2 now. 17 is not how many sides, but it's getting close to there. All I have to do is add 2 to the 17, and I get 19. So that means this shape would have 19 sides. So when it asks the sum of interior angles adds up to be 3060, how many sides does the polygon have? This particular shape has 19 sides. So when it asks you to figure out the sum of the interior angles, like part A, you take how many sides it has, you plug it into the equation. When it asks you how many sides it has, given the sum of the measure, you're going to take that and set it equal to this n minus 2 times 180 and solve for n. Now, common issue that I see a lot of times on homework and quizzes and tests is a lot of people like to stop right here. They just divide it by 180 and they take 17 because 17 seems like, okay, a reasonable number to have for number of sides. Just remember, after you divide by 180, 
you have to add two to whatever you get. So don't just stop at that number of sides just because you found a number that matches or that seems plausible. All right, now parts C and D kind of run through the same idea. So I'm just gonna run through to give us a little more practice. Now for C, it asks us what is the sum of the interior angles of a 14 gon? So 14 gon implies 14 sides. So that means we're gonna use 14 for my value of N. So what we're gonna do is this N minus two times 180, and we're gonna plug 14 in for N. So we're gonna do 14 minus two times by 180. Again, we're just gonna use our calculator to make the quick calculation. So 14 minus two times by 180, and the sum of the interior angles is gonna be 2,160 degrees. And that is our answer for part C. So if you're ever asked to find the sum of the interior angles, it should be a pretty simple thing. Just figure out how many sides you have, plug that in for N, and then just do that minus two, and then multiply it by 180. All right, so that is for part C. Now for part D, we're gonna go back to figuring out how many sides a shape has when we are told the sum of the angles. So for D, we're told the sum of the interior angles adds up to be 100 or 1,080. How many sides does the polygon have? So we're going to take this 1,080 and we're going to set it equal to n minus 2 times by 180. And we're going to go through and solve like we did for part B. So that means we're going to take 1,080, we're going to divide it by 180 as our first step. So 1,080 divided by 180 is going to give me 6. So we have 6 equals n minus 2. Now, while again, 6 seems like a plausible answer, we don't stop after dividing, yet we have to add 2. So that means this polygon has 8 sides. So that means the sum of the interior angles of an octagon is 1,080. And that is how we go through and do example 1. So again, if it wants you to find the sum of the interior angles, you're just going to plug in a number for n. If it wants you to figure out how many sides given the sum of the interior angles, you're going to take this and set it equal to it, and then solve for n. So those are going to be the two different methods you're going to see utilized related to example 1. All right, so that is example one. Let's go ahead and move on to example two. Now, example two, we are gonna continue using that n minus two times 180, but we're just gonna use it to solve a couple different problems. All right, for example two, it wants us to determine the unknown angle measures for each part. So for part A, they tell us the measure of all of these angles but x. So that means we need to figure out the measure of x in this shape. So they give us all the angle measures but one. Now, the thing we need to know is what is the sum or what should be the sum of all these angle measures. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how many sides this shape has. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So we have a 9-sided shape, so we have a nonagon, and we're going to use 9 as my value of n. So we're going to take n to equal 9, 
So we're going to do 9 minus 2 times by 180. And when I do 9 minus 2 times by 180, I end up with 1,260. So that's going to be the sum of all the angles inside my nonagon. So if I know that all these angles add up to be 1,260, that means I'm going to take 1,260 and subtract it by 125, 130, 172, 200, 140, 102, 98, and 135. So I'm going to subtract it by the eight angles that I know to figure out the measure of the ninth angle. So we're going to go through and do that right now to figure this out. So 1,260 minus 125 minus 130 minus 172 minus 200 minus 140 minus 102 minus 98 and then minus 135. If I hit enter, I end up with 158. So that means my measure of my missing angle and my value of x is going to be 158. So in this case, x equals 158. And that is the measure of my unknown angle. And that is how we do part A. All right, now for part B, we're going to carry a similar idea where we need to go through and figure out the sum of the interior angles before we can go through and start figuring out the value of the missing angle. Now for part B, we have a five-sided shape. So we have a pentagon. So that means I'm going to use five as my value for N. So it means we're going to do 5 minus 2 times 180. And when I do 5 minus 2 times 180, we end up with 540 degrees. So that means all five of these angles would add up to be 540 degrees. So that is my first step, is to figure out the sum of all the angles in a pentagon. And I get 540. Now, if we look at this shape, we need to figure out the measure of the unknown angles. Well, I have two x's involved here. And then I also know that these angles are 90 degrees because they tell me they're right angles. So I know all of these are 90 degrees. Now, I have two angles that are unknown. They're both defined by x. Because they're both defined by x, that means they are the same measure. So how we are going to set this one up is we're going to take my starting point of 540. And 540 is a result of adding all these up. So I'm going to take 540 and set it equal to 90 plus x plus 90 plus 90 plus x. So that will give me all five of the angles add up to be 540. So I just have to go through and combine like terms. If I do 90 plus 90 plus 90, we get 270. So it's going to be 540 equals 270 plus, because I have two x's, x plus x is 2x. So I have 540 equals 270 plus 2x. All we have to do is go through and solve for x. So we're going to take 540 and subtract it by 270. And I get 270 equals 2x. And then we just divide by 2 to figure out the value of x. And we get x to equal 135. So x equals 135, 
meaning if I plug it back in, I know this measure is 135 degrees, and this one is 135 degrees as well. This works just the same as if they were to tell you that this is x and this is x, or if they told you this is 2x and this is 2x. Same idea applies. It just, instead of having x and x, be 2x and 2x, which would mean this is 4x, and then you would divide. So that is how we go through and do parts A and B for example two. All right, moving on to the back side for other page. Now, there are parts C and D that are related to example two, just they don't give us any diagrams for this. Now, for these ones, if we look at C, it asks us to determine the measure of the fourth interior angle of a quadrilateral. If you know the other three measures are 89, 80, and 104. So we're going to use the same idea, they just don't give us a diagram to go off of. But because we're talking about a quadrilateral, that's a four-sided shape. So we're going to have n to equal 4 in this problem. So we're going to go through and do 4 minus 2 times by 180. And if I do 4 minus 2 times by 180, we end up with 360. So that means all the angles in a quadrilateral add up to be 360. So to figure out the measure of the fourth interior angle, we are just going to take 360 and subtract it by these three angles right here. So we're going to do 360 minus 89 minus 80 minus 104. And then I end up with 87 degrees for my answer. And so start with figuring out what the sum of all the angles should be, and then go through and subtract away. Now, part D is one that I would like to take a look at because it does pop up, and I just want to talk about the concept real quick here. For part D, it asks, what is the measure of each angle in a regular decagon? So two things here. It wants to know the measure of each angle. So when we're talking about a regular shape, whether it's a decagon, octagon, hexagon, whatever, a regular polygon just means that all the sides have the same measure and all the angles have the same measure. So whenever you are asked to figure out how to figure out the measure of each angle in a regular polygon, this is what you would do. So first of all, we need to start with how many sides does the shape have? Well, we're talking about a decagon, so that implies that I have 10 sides. So that means my value for n is going to be 10. Your first step is to figure out the sum of all the measure for the interior angle, so we're going to do 10 minus 2 times by 180. So if we do that, 180, we end up with 1,440. Now, that is the sum of all the angles in a decagon. Because we're talking about a regular decagon, we want to know the measure of the each angle. Now, regular implies that the fact that all the angles are the same. Decagon means that I have 10 different angles, just like I have 10 different sides. So we're going to take this 1440, and we're going to divide it by how many angles the shape has, which in this case is 10. So we're going to take 1440, divide by 10, and we get the fact that each measure, or the measure of each angle in a regular decagon, is 144. 
So anytime they ask you to find the measure of each angle in a regular shape, what you are going to do is figure out the sum of all of the measure of the interior angles. Then you're going to take that number and you're going to divide it by how many sides or how many angles it has, which they're the same, and then you'll get your answer for each angle measure. All right, so that is example two. Now, example one and example two, I know we went through a lot, but it's just good practice to see. And that's going to be a majority of your stuff is interior angles. Now, with our learning goal, I did mention the fact that we were going to be talking about exterior angles. So that is going to be our next focus for the notes. All right. An exterior angle is an angle formed by one side of a polygon and the extension of an adjacent side. The exterior angle forms linear pairs with the interior angles. Now, a remote interior angle is an interior angle that is not adjacent to the exterior angle. So let's talk about what all this means. The example in this diagram is that this is our exterior angle. It's outside of the shape, it's formed from the shape, and one of the sides having an extension. So this side has an extension that goes over here. So using this extension in this side, this is our exterior angle. Now when it talks about remote interior, it's going to become helpful here in a second, the remote interior are the angles and we're just talking triangles today, are the two angles that are not next to the exterior. So this angle is right next to it. So the remote interior are the two that are not touching or next to the exterior angle. This angle right here would be considered an interior angle, but it is not a remote exterior, or remote interior, sorry. Interior, 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 remote interior, remote interior, exterior. So exterior angle, remote interior, remote interior. Now the reason why it's helpful to know that stuff is if we look at the exterior angle theorem, it states this, that the measure of an exterior angle, so the measure of this, is equal to the sum of the measure of its remote interior. So the measure of this angle is equal to this plus this. So just go with me for a second, and let's say that this is 60 degrees, and this is 70 degrees. Just for example, pulling them out of thin air. If I know this is 60 and this is 70, that means this exterior angle is 60 plus 70, which would make this 130. So this equals this plus this. We don't care at all about this interior angle right here. We just know that the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote interior. So using that concept, that is how we're going to go through and figure out example two. All right, now example two is going to want us to go through and determine the measure of the specific angle they ask us. Now, before we jump into that, just to note, the exterior angle sum theorem states that the sum of the measures of the exterior angles always add up to be 360, no matter if we're talking about a triangle, a pentagon, hexagon, whatever, they all always add up to be 360. All right, so example two, if we look at part A, they want us to figure out the measure of VWY. So VWY is gonna be this angle here. So we're trying to find the measure of the exterior angle. Again, the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior. So that's gonna be 40 plus 80. So the measure of angle V wy is equal to 40 plus 80. And if we do 40 plus 80 in our calculator, 
we, oh, I forgot to add the zero. 40 plus 80 is going to be 120. So that means the measure of this angle is 120 degrees. So if they're just asking you for the measure of the exterior angle, you're going to take the remote interior and add them together. All right, for part B, so they must define the measure of angle L, which is going to be this angle right here. So it's one of our remote interior. Now, the exterior angle theorem states that this, 130 degrees, is equal to 65 plus L, because the interior, the remote interior. So we're going to take 130 and set it equal to 65 plus the measure of angle L. So all I have to do for this is just take 130 and subtract it by 65. And in this case, we get 65 for the measure of angle L. So that means 65 is my answer in this case. So that is just a very general basic example of using the exterior angle theorem. For parts C and D, we're going to go through and up it a little bit by involving variables. So let's go ahead and move this up to go through and practice C and D. So we're going to keep the same idea that the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote interior. Now for this one, it wants me to figure out the measure of PRS, which is going to be this angle right here. So I want to figure out the measure of that angle, but before I can go through and do that, I have to figure out the value of X. Now to figure out the value of X, what we're going to do is go through and use the exterior angles theorem, which states this angle is equal to this plus this. So we're going to take 3x minus 8 and set it equal to, and this is 90 degrees, 90 plus x plus 2. So it's the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote interior. So 3x minus 8 equals 90 plus x plus 2. So the first thing we're going to go through and do is combine like terms, and then we'll go through and solve for x. I'm okay on the left side with 3x minus 8. And then on the right side, we're going to combine the 90 and the 2. So I get x plus 92. Next step is to get x on the same side, so I can either move the 3x to the right or the x to the left. I'm going to move x to the left, so 3x minus x, 3 minus 1 is going to be 2, so I have 2x minus 8 equals 92. I'm going to add 8 to the right side, so 92 plus 8 is going to give me 100. And then all I have to do is divide by 2. So 100 divided by 2 is going to give me 50. So I now know that x equals 50, and that's all well and good. But now I need to use that 50 to go through and figure out the measure of PRS. So we're going to go through and plug 50 in for x, for PRS. So angle... PRS equals 3 times 50 minus 8. So we're going to do 3 times 50, and we get 150 minus 8. It's going to give us 142. So that means the measure of PRS is 142 degrees. And that is how you go through and use the exterior angles theorem to figure out the value of a variable 
and then plug it back in to find an angle measure. So I just want to wrap up with part D. So for part D, they want us to find the measure of angle B, which is going to be this angle right here. So again, we're going to use our exterior angles theorem, which states the exterior angle, in this case 145 degrees, is equal to the sum of the remote interior, so that would be 2z plus 5z minus 2. So we're going to go through and solve for z, and then we'll plug it back in to figure out the value of b. So if we go through and combine like terms, I have a 2z and a 5z, so I have 7z. So it's going to be 145 equals 7z, and then that's minus 2. So I'm going to go through, and because I have the variable on one side, we're going to add the 2 to 145, and I get 147, and that equals 7z. Then from here, all I have to do is just take 147 divided by 7, and I end up with 21 for my value of z. So z equals 21. And again, this question wanted me to figure out the measure of angle B. So I'm going to plug it into this 5z minus 2. So angle B is going to be 5 times 21 minus 2. So 5 times 21 is going to be 105. Subtract it by 2. And angle B is going to be 100 and three degrees. And that is my answer for part D. All right, so that is it for our lesson today on interior and exterior angles of polygons, whether it be triangles, quadrilaterals, and so on. Um, be sure as you go through the homework to reference back to the video or use my completed notes. Otherwise, that is it for today on section 7.1, dealing with the interior and exterior angles. If you have any questions, as always, let me know next time you see me, or just shoot me an email. So, that is it for today. Thank you for listening, and have a great day. All right, bye.